Well, hey guys, welcome back to the Friday q and I've been getting a fair number of questions from you all about hair care and uh, hair loss. So for today's q and I'm going to address all of your questions on hair loss and hair shedding. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist and I film Day in the Life of a Dermatologist vlogs as well as a skincare Q&A focused on a skincare topic of interest. So if this sounds of, of uh, interest and intrigue to you, I encourage you to stick around and let's get into it. So if you've been noticing like more hair on your pillow in the morning or an increased amount of hair in your brush or in your shower drain, you may uh, wonder, is this hair loss? Why am I, I suddenly shedding more hair? So I think one of the most frequently um, asked questions is what, what is the difference between um, just normal hair shedding and like actual hair loss? So it's actually quite normal to shed up to anywhere from 100 to 150 hairs a day. Um, our hair cycle is in three phases. Um, unlike cats and dogs, wherein they shed all of their fur at once, for example, a, a proportion of human hair is always undergoing uh, some shedding. And so those are referred to as telogen hairs. And so they're, they're supposed to fall out um, and new ones will should grow in their place. Excessive shedding of telogen hairs, however, is referred to as telogen effluvium, and that can occur in, in a variety of settings. It's particularly common in individuals who have experienced a stressful uh, life or uh, medical event, and it typically occurs three months after the event. Such events include things like extreme weight loss, giving birth, simply being under a lot of stress, like having to take care of a sick loved one, starting a new job, <laughs> a big move, going through a divorce or losing your job. If you've been sick, and particularly if you've had a high fever, or if you've undergone any sort of operation, or this also can occur in the setting of starting and or stopping a new birth control pill. Crash dieting is associated with this, people going on juice cleanses, for example, um, approximately three months afterwards can have excessive hair shedding and hair thinning. And people who uh, exercise and, uh, you know, run marathons, for example, will often experience a telogen effluvium approximately three months after the big race. So another common question that I get is, well, when can I expect the success of shedding to stop? Well, the shedding, as I mentioned, usually starts around three months after the event. If the event uh, was chronic, it may persist a little bit longer. However, in general, the, shed the amount of shedding usually peaks about four months after it starts. And then, then as your body readjusts, the excessive shedding will slow down and then stop. Usually within six to nine months, the hair shedding will stop and your, your hair fullness will go back to what it uh, normally was. However, if you stay under a lot of stress or there are other stressors that occur in your life, the shedding can be long lived. People who are constantly under a lot of stress can have long term excessive hair shedding. So what should you do about excessive hair shedding? Well, it's very, very important to see a healthcare provider for evaluation and management to make sure there's not an underlying medical cause or vitamin deficiency driving uh, the problem and to, to better identify what, what could be causing it. Now I've talked a fair amount so far about hair shedding or telogen effluvium, but this differs from actual hair loss. Hair loss occurs when something actually stops the hair from growing. And the medical term for this is antigen effluvium. Antigen refers to the phase of our hair cycle in which the hair is actively growing. The most common causes of this type of hair loss include certain genetic diseases, certain diseases of the immune system, some drugs or medications, hairstyles that pull on the hair, or harsh hair care products like chemical straighteners, relaxers, and in some, a compulsion to pull at one's hair. And if you have hair loss, the condition will not stop until these insults are, are removed. So like, like excessive hair shedding, however, 
in order to figure out uh, the cause, it, it's best to see a healthcare provider for evaluation and management uh, to, der to, to determine if there is an underlying medical problem and how best to manage it. But those are some common causes. If you suspect that a medicine that you're on is contributing to your hair loss, I also encourage you to talk to your doctor rather than just stopping it because some some medications can have serious effects if you just suddenly and arbitrarily decide to stop them on your own. And importantly, other causes of hair loss may require treatment. Many people who have genetic causes for hair loss will continue to lose hair without any treatment. And, and in women who have a genetic background that predisposes them for hereditary hair loss, they often notice a gradual thinning and likewise, men who have a, a genetic tendency towards hair loss frequently notice uh, a receding hairline or sometimes a bald patch that, that forms at the center of the scalp. And in these cases, there are certain treatments that may help. So if that sounds like you, again, it's best to see a healthcare provider for evaluation and management. Some people have a combination of both things going on. And the sooner treatment, and oftentimes the sooner the problem is evaluated, potential offending agents are removed and treatment and or treatment is begun, the better the outcome is for your hair loss. So I get many questions about hair care and, and tips for hair care. So how you style your hair can contribute to hair loss and hair breakage. Depending on what you're doing to it, it can cause it to look frizzy, dull, lifeless. So here are some tips. Avoid using a blow dryer or a, a flat iron tool on the hair. The high heat um, dries out the cuticle coating, the waxy cuticle that coats the hair shaft. It dries it out and makes the hair brittle and susceptible to breakage. And if the hair breaks close to the top of your head, you may actually perceive that as hair loss. Um, so that would be one thing to stop doing for sure. And um, Instead, air dry the hair or gently wrap the hair in a um, non-terry cloth uh, gentle towel or like I do, a t-shirt um, so as to not ruffle the hair cuticle uh, to be very gentle on the wet strands. Keep handling of your wet hair to a minimum. Never comb or brush wet hair. Um, it's always tempting to, to comb out the tangles, um, but they all sort of uh, weave themselves out as the hair dries, there's actually no need to, to comb, comb them out. Um, just gently uh, towel dry uh, the hair and as it dries, you, you know, you may find just by running your fingers gently through your hair that the tangles uh, are no longer an issue. Likewise, keeping brushing um, to a minimum will also cut down on frizz and fracture of the hair shaft. There's this old wives' tale that you should brush your hair a hundred times a day. That actually yeah, leads to split ends and brittle hair, so don't follow that tip. Certain products that are marketed as long-lasting hold, those should be avoided. And particularly if you're using a comb to comb these products through, and, and in doing, it can cause the hair to break and in doing so lead to hair loss over time. And if you do want to use a flat iron, it should be used uh, never to wet hair, only on dry hair and on a low setting, ideally, so as to not fry your poor hair shaft. And try and limit it to no more than every other day. Hairstyles that are hard on the hair shaft and the growing hair include tight braids, weaves, cornrows, really, really tight ponytails, and hair extensions. This chronic pulling on the hair um, actually can cause the hair to, you know, break, but the growing hair itself can be under so much duress from that chronic traction, it can actually scar down and uh, lead to, to hair loss in, in areas subject to the chronic traction. So loose hairstyles are, are really best. Many people ask me about biotin supplements for hair. And I personally take a biotin supplement and have noticed an improvement in the thickness of my hair. Um, talk to your doctor if this is right for you. 
Personally, I take a biotin supplement every day, and after approximately three months of, of continued use, I did notice an improvement in the thickness of my hair. But in addition to that, I also had uh, stopped heat styling my hair, and I'd stopped blow drying my hair, and I introduced my t-shirt toweling method uh, to the, to the um, lineup. So those are other factors that may have contributed to, to the improved uh, thickness and density of my hair uh, with the biotin. But I still continue to take it. Um, a biotin is a um, water-soluble vitamin, and it uh, seems to be fairly well tolerated. Some people anecdotally report that it worsens their acne, but that's not something that's been reported in the medical literature. One problem, however, with vitamin supplements is that they're not regulated, so there's no way to know that the supplement that you're taking is any good. <laughs> um, so, you know, if, some, if your healthcare provider has recommended that you take biotin supplements, ask them which one they, they recommend for you, um, and that would be the one to go with, but it's largely anecdotal because there's, these things aren't regulated, so we have no way of knowing that they actually contain uh, biotin <laughs> or even what a, a good amount of biotin to be taking is for this that's not uh, agreed upon so but anyways guys I hope you found this video helpful today um, next week's video I'm going to talk about the most frequently asked questions about hair loss in new moms and postpartum hair loss as sort of a second part to this video so stay tuned for that uh, give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe I'll talk to you guys in my next Q&A bye